Hello and welcome. In 2017, a couple of years ago, I did an installation of solar panels on my roof and I did this DIY. I uh, hired an electrician to help out a little bit, but I did most of it myself. And if you're interested in seeing the cost breakdown of that, you can click on this card that will pop out here and, the, and that is a video that I made about that a couple of years ago. Back when I did that, I had some neighbors that also installed solar panels on their roof and they're just a few homes away from me. And around that time, I had other friends and family that were wondering, well, is it cost effective to put solar panels not south facing? Because south facing is best, but does it make sense to still do it on the east and west sides of the roof? And so now that it's been a couple of years, uh, I have access to my neighbor's energy monitoring portal, and I can show you a breakdown of the difference between my south facing roof and their east west facing roof. Now, just a couple of particulars to get uh, clear on this. Our system sizes are slightly different, but they're very close. Mine is a 6.38 kilowatt array, and theirs is a 6.67 kilowatt array. Um, other than that, pretty much everything else is the same or very close to it. The panels are probably different brand. Uh, the uh, inverters are both Solar Edge inverters, and they are paired with power optimizers so that each panel can operate independent of each other. So let's dive into the data. Here are the monitoring portals for both of our systems. The one here on the left side of the screen is my neighbor's east-west facing solar array and the one here on the right is mine which is a south facing array. Uh, what we're looking at here is the entire year of 2017 broken down by month. Uh, you can see that they started production in May at some point and so that was a partial month and then they have for the rest of the year. For me, I didn't start until August, and that's a partial month, so we can't really you know, look at that as a complete month anyway. So looking here at September, that is our first complete month of production. And you can see that I produced uh, 0.926 uh, megawatt hours, uh, which is nearly 1,000 kilowatt hours. Uh, September on their side, they produced 0.77. If we look at October, they produced 0.7, and my October was 1 megawatt hours. Then we can look here at November and mine is 0.6 and December is 0.6 as well, just very minor difference. And looking at theirs, they were 0.4 and 0.36. Now, another reason why I think in winter their production is not quite as good is because the orientation of their panels and how they're positioned on the roof. When it snows, the snow just um, slides off their panels a little bit and then builds up along the, the valley of the roof. Uh, my roof also had some of that same problem this, this winter, and it wasn't until the next summer that I shifted the panels closer to the edge of the roof so that the snow would go straight off the roof. And I actually created a video about that. If you're interested, click on this card right here that will pop out, and, and that will outline exactly what was going on there with the snow. So this is the first year of production. It's a partial year, so it's not as incredibly helpful, uh, but you can already start to see that there were months where um, I was producing more basically, even though our system sizes were the same. Uh, one point of clarification, our inverters are actually sized differently. Uh, theirs is a five kilowatt inverter and mine is a uh, 7.6 kilowatt inverter. And the reason for that is I had plans to do a phase two uh, and that would allow me to increase my solar array up to 10 kilowatts, which I have actually since done. But the data that we're going to be looking at today is this uh, strictly the uh, 6.38 kilowatt size that I had at that time. So let's jump into 2018. And we can now see the first complete year of power production for both of us. So starting over here in January, they were at 0.381 and I'm over here at 0.5, so pretty big difference there, and then 0.37, and then over here I am at 0.5, so already more power production. And then March is when the power production definitely starts to ramp up, and keep in mind here in Utah, that's when our solar uh, net metering balance with our utility resets, depending on when your billing cycle is in March. Uh, not that that's relevant to the power production at all, but that's you, that's a helpful thing for us to, to know that it's starting to ramp up right when it resets and then we are able to ramp up and keep all of this for the following winter. So they produced in March of 2018 0.78 and we were at 0.9 and then they produced 0.9 in April and April for us we produced just over one megawatt hour. So pretty close on that. We can also just look at these lines right here. That's the one megawatt hour line and you can see over here on there. So um, in May they produce 1.061 and May for me 
was 1.111, so just a tiny bit more than them. And then in June was the, the highest for both of us at 1.292 for me and for them 1.263. So that's so far is about the closest, but I still exceeded theirs just a little bit. And then continuing on through the year, July 1.1 over here, there at 1.1 as well. So pretty minor difference there. Uh, and then August one uh, megawatt hour for me and August for them was 0.8. And then, oh, uh, one thing to take note of is um, their system actually went offline. Two thirds of their system stopped working completely and they didn't notice for a couple of weeks until actually I got access to their monitoring portal and pointed it out to them. And so that's the one reason why this uh, August and September are so low. That's not complete data that we're looking at there. Uh, in fact, I can click here on August and it will break down the whole month for us. And you can see right here on the 26th of August is when two thirds of their system just went offline for some reason. And then if we move over here into the next month, uh, this whole section here was just one third of their array functioning. And then they fixed it here on the 24th. And so then our, their, their production jumped back up. So that explains the, the big difference there. Now, if we jump forward into 2019 and look at their August and September production, that gives you an idea of what it should have looked like. I did a quick calculation on uh, comparing the difference between their August and September between their two years and adding that difference on in 2018 to give me a more complete picture for that whole year. And so the difference for August was 0.228 megawatt hours and the September was 0.441 megawatt hours. So a difference of 0.639 megawatt hours uh, for that year for 2018. So when I add that on to their entire production for 2018, instead of it being this 8.44, their total would have been actually 9.079 megawatt hours. So comparing nine megawatt hours to my 10.83 megawatt hours. So South Facing gave us an additional uh, basically 1.8 megawatt hours. Now let's uh, do some comparison of the energy production within the day to give you an idea of how the solar is generated differently uh, throughout the day. So let's go here to June, the highest power producing month. And we'll do that on both sides. And you can just see across the, the time frame here, um, you can see that our production matches, you can see the weather is very much the same and, and it matches pretty closely. Uh, if we look down here at this, this is a 46 kilowatt hour day. I'm trying to find the highest uh, power production for the, the, the whole uh, month. And it looks like, yeah, this one right here of uh, 46.153 is the highest. So that's um, uh, June 10th. So I'm gonna come over here to June 10th on theirs, which incidentally 44.8, um, yeah, it's the highest for them. Oh, 45, they have a 45 over here on the 30th. We'll go check on that. Uh, so looking at the 10th, um, this is kind of interesting. You'll notice that you know, I have a notch over here on mine and they have a notch as well. It's shaped slightly differently just because this, the sun, uh, when there's maybe clouds, it, it casts differently depending on the angle of the panels. Um, but what you maybe will notice is that the width of this is different. Uh, mine is a sharper, it's, it's a little bit more of an angled um, generation day and theirs is flatter and, and wider. And that's because when the sun comes up in the morning, it's hitting primarily on their east side, their west side is not getting hardly anything. But for me, it's hitting all of mine simultaneously. And then when I get up to the peak of the day here, it was 5.5 kilowatts in this particular day, um, it's radiating down evenly across all my panels simultaneously and then starts going back down. So there's a quick peak there and then it starts coming back down. Whereas over here on theirs, it's more rounded up here because it's hitting their east panels initially and then it's starting to transition over to their west panels and then it will continue uh, hitting primarily their west panels. Uh, you'll see the angle of the sides of this is a little bit different as well, depending on the shadows that they're potentially having cast on their roof from trees. On the east side of their roof, they have a larger tree, which is giving them some morning sunlight, um, uh, limiting their morning sunlight, I should say. And that's why once the tree gets past, it starts to skyrocket more quickly. Let's look here at the next day. Um, this is a perfectly sunny day, and this maybe illustrates just a little bit better how mine is a sharper, narrower day, and theirs is a wider day. Uh, and we can just kind of scan here through the next couple of days, and you'll see that the production really closely matches each other, but still varies a little bit. Uh, and that's just the nature of the panels being in different orientations. 
um, but we literally get the exact same weather every day. Um, so there's only the variance there of the panels and how they are collecting the solar energy. Now let's jump over to the 30th just for fun because as you saw it was a higher producing day for them. So uh, they produced 45 and I produced 40 that particular day. Um, I'm honestly not sure why uh, there was that difference that day. You'll see that my peak was at about 5.4 or 5.5 was the very peak of the day for me and theirs peaked at 5 just in 5 and a little bit of change there. Um, so my peak gets higher because it has full exposure across all my panels simultaneously right when the sun gets to its perfect angle. Uh, whereas theirs, there is never a perfect angle for all the panels simultaneously. So there's, it's a little bit more heavily weighted on the, on the, on uh, the morning and then the afternoon. What I'm showing you here is the physical layout of the solar panels on the two different systems. Uh, mine here on the right side, like I said, I had a phase two that I installed. So these uh, 12 panels right here, you can ignore. Uh, we're not talking about the energy from those. Uh, but these uh, panels over here on the right side are the ones that uh, we are comparing. And then for theirs, they have eight panels here and here. Uh, this is on the west side, this is on the east side, and then this is on the east side as well, just a little bit further south. I'm not sure why they're upside down. Whoever put this together did not lay those out uh, very easily to look at. And so if we look at just today's energy production, so right now we are uh, in uh, June of 20, uh, 2020, and uh, we can see each of the panels here produced uh, this one 1.63, 1.67, 1.71, 1.56 in this region. And then if you look over here, 1.65, 1.65, 1.64. So they're all very much, pretty much the same. This is 1.8, 1.79, 1.83. So these down here are just a tiny bit more. There's always going to be a little bit of variance just from the manufacturer. Uh, they, they come with some variance there. But basically their orientation is enough the same that they get the same amount of exposure on the east side and then later in the day they get the same on the west side. It's not really a huge difference. And across mine, they all have exactly the same exposure. So these variances here is strictly manufacturer um, differences. Um, there are no shadows being cast on my roof at all from anything. Now, while we're here, you can see over here on my side, I'm in 2019 here, uh, in July is when I uh, installed phase two. And so my system now had 9.98 .9 kilowatts solar array, but everything else is still the same. It's on the same 7,600 uh, watt uh, inverter, which per the manufacturer's specifications, you can go quite a bit higher than that. And what it will do is it will clip off the top of each day and that will get into uh, making the inverter work more efficiently because it's more under load. Maybe I'll do another video later about that. Uh, but in, in any case, this July here had, uh, July 25th is when I installed the system. So it started producing right there at the end of the month and then just really rocketed up on its production, obviously. And that's the 10 kilowatt system that's now producing this energy. And we can jump into 2020 on both of these as well. And um, now it's not a fair comparison by any means. This is a 10 kilowatt array on the right side and a 6.67 kilowatt array on the left. Um, but it's still cool to see I'm getting up there um, at 1.733 megawatt hours in May. June is going to be even better based on the past trends because June has the longest uh, days of the year. Now let's compare the difference in power production in the uh, winter months versus the summer months. The winter solstice is December 21st and the next closest day to that uh, that was a fully sunny day was uh, December 22nd, so the very next day. Um, and then let's compare it to the summer solstice and the, the June 20th is the summer solstice and it happens to be that June 21st was the um, uh, next sunniest day after that. So we're pretty close to on both of these. If we look here, uh, the production really ramped up starting at 8 a.m. on uh, this December day and pretty much was done by 4.45 p.m. And the same over here on my array, it, it exhibits that exact same behavior. The days are the same length for both arrays, obviously. Uh, the behavior between them is a little bit different. Mine is a fatter uh, array. Uh, um, it, it stays higher producing for longer. And the peak gets up to 4.6 kilowatts. And over here, they're peaking at 2.7 kilowatts. Um, I'm not entirely sure why theirs doesn't perform as well in the winter. And theirs is even more peaked and mine's a little bit more wide. 
Um, and if you look up here at the total power production, they got 15.3 kilowatt hours and I got 28.3. So quite a big difference there. So let's now go to June 21st, which is the day after the summer solstice. And you can see it starts really ramping up. It's a little bit more gradual here, but let's put it right here at this kind of base of the steep curve. And that started at about 6.45 a.m. And then over here, it pretty much dropped off by 8.45 p.m. And over here on theirs, it pretty much went straight down and it finished at about 8.45. And over here really started rocketing up at 6.30 a.m. And so it's a little bit wishy-washy how you want to compare these because they're not exactly comparable lines. But the lengths of the day uh, and when theirs ramped up versus when ours ramped up are pretty much the same. I hope this has been informative for you to give you an idea of how big of a difference it is to have a south-facing solar array versus east-west and whether or not it makes sense for you to do because obviously you can't change the orientation of your home um, but this might still give you confidence that you do get power from the east-west sides just fine. It's just not quite as ideal as south-facing. If you're interested in seeing future videos about solar or electric cars or technology, feel free to subscribe to my channel, change the bell notification to all, and you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And with that, thanks for watching.